All right, we're recording. Okay, so if you are a odd student, you got this handout uh, the day before I'm making this video, and your version of it actually had, you can see kind of, I, I wrote over it, it said Leibniz notation here. That was a typo, that's tomorrow's uh, lesson about Leibniz notation. Today we're just gonna use kind of regular shortcut notation, and we're gonna learn something called the chain rule. And I've just added a little bit to these notes here. If I have a composite function, capital F of X, which is actually uh, made up of two functions, F and G, where I have F of G of X, from now on I'm gonna kinda say that the F function is what I'm gonna call my outside function, and the G is what I'm gonna call my inside function. And if I know that the, the combination of them, the composite uh, of them, is differentiable everywhere, I know that neither of these functions has uh, a cusp or a discontinuity, then I can say that there's a rule that allows me to find the derivative of the whole thing rather quickly. It's called the chain rule, and it works like this. The derivative of the composite function is, and I'll, I'll try to say this carefully, it's the derivative of the outside function with the inside function substituted inside of it. And I say leave it alone because you don't change the inside function. And then you multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So uh, if you need a little more time to write this stuff down, feel free to pause the video and then we're gonna just roll right into the examples here. Um, first of all, take a look at this example and think about what we would be doing without this new rule, this chain rule. Think about it this way. We've had derivatives, we've asked you to do derivatives of, of binomials before. You don't have to write this part down. This is just kind of some scrap thinking. And what we made you do, of course, is expand it first, right? And then it's very easy to do the derivative of that. So if this is y, then y primed, oops, I'm sorry, that's still y. Hang on. Then y primed would be just, ta-da, derivative of that. But what if instead of squared, we had higher powers than squared? Even a cubed is kind of a drag, right? Because I'd have to think, okay, well, it's this thing times by another x plus 3. And then, I mean, what if it was a 4, right? Then I'd have to do that. You know, think about how much work it would be to expand it as the power gets bigger and bigger. So the chain rule is very much a shortcut way to kind of get around that. All right, so let's see if we can follow our, our new pattern here. So first of all, let's define things. Do you recognize that that's a composite function? Do you see the outside and the inside? The outside function here, if, if f of x with a capital F is two functions, one inside the other, then what are those two functions? Well, I'm gonna say that I, I see f of x as x to the seventh. And I see the inside function, g of x, as the part in the bracket, x cubed minus x. So there's my two functions. And then I think separately I'll do the derivatives of them. The derivative of f of x, which I'll call f primed of x, is of course 7x to the 6 using my power rule. And g primed of x, again using power rules, is 3x squared minus 1. Right? Okay, so now let's put these four pieces of information together and use our, our new formula here. How does, how does this formula work? Well, I would say that f primed of x is, so okay, so it's the derivative of the outside function, which is this guy. This is the derivative of the outside function, but I replace the x with g of x, or in other words, leave the inside function alone. So it's seven x cubed minus x to the six, and that takes care of this part times g primed of x, which is right here. And there we go. Now, simplifying that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be very much fun because I'd still be expanding this thing here, which is a power of 6. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that. That's a perfectly good solution. And, uh, you know, just to check that I had it right, I actually did put it on Desmos. I said, okay, here's, here's my original function. 
And here's what I know the derivative should look like. I'll, I'll get Desmos to do the derivative for me. And then here's what I graphed. Here's the answer that I got. And as you can see, it's green, it's blue, it's green, it's blue, it's the same function. And I know it looks like it's a weird rectangle, but if you actually zoom in on it, there, there, are, there are actual, as you can see, uh, crests and troughs going on in there because it is you know, a power of six and then a power of two. And quite an interesting looking thing. But anyway, there's the, uh, the mechanics of how the chain rule works. Um, of course, even something that was a power of four, or even if, you know, the, the example we just did a power of seven, given enough time and enough patience, I could expand it. What would I do with one like the next example? Right, now you're probably looking at going, well, I don't think of that as an exponent. Well, you should, it, it is an exponent, right? It's really 2x squared plus three to the power of a half. It's just that that's not in a, something that I can use my ordinary power rules to, uh, to, to simplify. Now, this is interesting. Um, okay, I'm kind of seeing something kind of different here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to close that for a second and then open this up again. Okay. And there we go. Guys at home, just uh, pop into the chat. Are you seeing my, my desktop here, my screen? Somebody in the chat want to just make sure that we're doing this? Because my, my screen went all weird for a second. Okay, good. All right. That was odd. Okay, moving on. Do you see the composite nature of this function? Can you see it's two pieces? If, again, if f of x with a capital F is really an outside and an inside function, what are they? Well, the outside function to me is x to the one-half. And the inside function to me is 2x squared plus 3. What's the derivative of the outside function? Well, the derivative of the outside function is one-half x to the negative one-half. And what's the derivative of the inside function? That would be 4x. So according to my chain rule, f prime of x should be the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function. In other words, leave the inside function the way it originally is, times the derivative of that inside function. So let's see. So that will be the derivative of my outside function, but replace this x with g of x. So it's 1 half, and instead of x, I go 2x squared plus 3, but that's now to the power of negative 1 half, times g prime of x is 4x. Okay, this one I will simplify just a little bit. If I'm timesing a half by 4x, I might as well just say that the, that's 2x. And of course, what if I did want this back? I mean, the original question was in radical form, not exponential powers or sorry, not exponential powers, not fractional exponents. So I think I'll go back to radical form. So this, this x is part of the numerator. And of course, all of this thing is taken to a negative power, which puts it in the denominator. And then, of course, it's a square root. So there we go. That would be my, my answer for that. Oh, hang on, I lost a 2. Thank you. Good eye. Okay. That's an excellent question. The question, if you couldn't hear it at home, was should you rationalize the denominator from there? Which you could, right? Times top and bottom of this thing by, by the, the, uh, the radical square root of 2x squared plus 3? Probably not. I think we're probably pretty happy here. Of course, if you were doing your work at home and this was your answer, but the textbook said this, Would, would it freak you out? I mean, do you see that that is, in fact, the same answer? And I hope everybody here is not going to make the mistake of going, oh, well, 2x cancels the 2x squared and just leaves me with an x. No, 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 you can't do that. You cannot cancel pieces of, of, of uh, binomials. You can only cancel entire terms. You can't, or sorry, entire factors. You cannot cancel terms. You can only cancel factors. 
Okay, so these would be the two ways I would see the answer. But I have a feeling your textbook probably just stopped there. All right, let's try another one. All right, so g of x to me is going to be some f of g of x, two smaller functions. And I think that the, uh, the outside function is the cube root of x. And I think that the... Oh, I guess I forgot the, forgot the x. Hold on. And the inside function is 3x squared plus 2x. So let's do their derivatives first. Derivative of that thing is going to be 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds, right? Because 1, mi 1 third minus 1. And g primed of x is 6x plus 2. All right, so what is g primed of x according to my chain rule? Well, it's one third, and then replace the x with the original g of x. And then times by the derivative. And I can't see that getting anywhere if I decided to try to simplify it at all, so I think I'll just leave it the way it is. Good enough for that one. Okay, and then uh, let's try this next one. As you start to do these, eventually, like probably not even too far from, from now in the future, you probably won't need to do all of this thinking. In fact, why don't we just try that right now? Let's see if we can skip the rigmarole and just go directly to f primed of x. All right, so step one, treat this bracket like it's just an x. So this is, to me, x to the negative 3. So that's going to be negative 3x to the negative 4. But my x gets replaced with what the original inside function was. Then I multiply by the derivative of what's inside the bracket, the derivative of the x from f of x which is um, 4x cubed minus 2x. Okay? And the original question had negative exponents, so I can leave negative exponents in the answer, no big deal. Okay? But what if I did get asked to simplify this? Well, let's see. Can we simplify this one? We can simplify it a bit, I think. You can say that the negative 3 stays on top. The 4x cubed minus 2x stays on top. And on the bottom, you'd have this thing to the power of 4. And you could even try to simplify it even a little more than that. but. Uh, because you could factor an x out of here. You could definitely factor some x's out of there. right? If you factored this on top, let's see, what would it be? You could factor out a 2x, and you'd have um, 2x minus 1. And then over here, let's see, would that actually simplify? No, that's not going to simplify very much. No, I think I just leave the bottom alone. So there, if my answer key said this, or this, or this, I should recognize that I've done it right. Okay? No, I just fact... Is it 2x squared? No, the derivative of this thing, right? Is the derivative of x squared is 2x. No. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry, that should have been... Yeah, you're right. That's a cubed. That's a squared. Sorry, right. you're right. Now all three of these things are the same answer. Thank you. All right, one more. Mr. Lacko made these up. He was not kidding around with this one. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think for this one, I am going to go back to, the, to, exp to kind of thinking about it in pieces. So f of x is two functions, one inside the other. I think that my outside function is the cube root of x. My inside function is the square root of x plus 5x squared. 
All right, what are their derivatives going to look like? Okay, to do derivatives, you get out of radicals, and you put that into fractional exponents, so that's x to the one-third. And for the derivative of the g function, again, I'd make that one-half x to the negative one-half plus 10x. So, f primed of x is the, this derivative, but I replace this x with what g of x was originally, which uh, I'll just say is x to the 1 half plus 5x squared. And then, so that's to the negative 2 thirds times 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus 10x. And that's a perfectly good answer. But if we had to go back to a, a radical form for that answer, let's see. We would have the square root. No, oh, geez, this would be ugly. I would have um, 1 over 2 root x plus 10x all over 3 times the cube root of uh, the square root of x plus 5x squared squared. Right? Somebody double check my thinking on that. I think that's right. And of course, now look at this and you can say, Ooh, there's all kinds of places we could go with this, right? We could, for example, take this numerator and try to turn it into one thing and then move the denominator of that down to here. You're going to find in your first year university course of, of, uh, of calculus, or if you uh, take the AB calculus next year, um, when they first test you on chain rule, when you're first testing just to make sure you know how to do chain rule, they will want you to stop here and they'll take off marks if you don't. At the university level, they might not even mark it. They'll just say, no, leave it completely unsimplified. And if you start simplifying it, they'll just say zero. Thanks for coming out. You didn't follow instructions. Because as you can see, there's a lot of different ways I could kind of take this answer. And then as a poor person trying to mark this, and you have 200 of them to mark, you, you'd get very lost very fast trying to follow everybody's different versions of simplification. So expect that the first time we quiz this stuff. There will be at least a couple of questions where it actually says in the instructions, do not simplify. But we also do need to make sure that you can follow instructions and say that you're working with some sort of formula where you're doing calculus. And that formula, when you're done, has to be in a specific type of notation. Like example, we want radicals instead of fractional exponents. So we will want you to show that you can still do the, 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 uh, the mechanics of simplification. But when we're just testing to see if you understand chain rule, We'll probably just make you stop there. All right, that's our chain rule. Time for you to try some. I'll just stop my little video here. <laughs>